Hi, Punim. Anyone know what Punim means? I'll give you a hint. It's Yiddish for face. So there was a club on Rush Street called Faces, and we used to call it Punims. So hi, Punim. How's everyone doing today? Everyone doing all right? Okay, I want to sh uh, show this megaphone because I see it popping up in uh, different markets. So everyone, the whole world's looking at this megaphone, broadening top formation in the S&Ps. You know, normally, you know, when everyone's looking at one thing, you have to be a little jaded and skeptical. But, you know, this formation's still in force. And I don't think too many people are expecting this to happen. Right. And we actually the turnaround Tuesday trade that would have worked was shorting S&Ps. So uh, are we going to get another rally here? Uh, it's possible a huge, big range. But uh, overall, uh, I don't know what to do. So I have a lot of uh, cathartic things to say. I don't know. And uh, here yesterday, obviously, my turnaround Tuesday selection failed in silver. But I just want to show you that we do have another megaphone formation here in silver with a throwover happening right now. Okay, so this gold silver ratio really collapsed, something we were talking about for months. And I just want to show you that to be careful with it now, because on some shorter term indicators, we're starting to get some divergence here. One heck of a move in a, in a few days. So actually, Steve Volge said we could fail. I thought we'd get an ABC when we're push up. I think we're back down towards one of his levels. So uh, just be aware in the silver that you have a megaphone. The way to trade it is to wait until it's inside the megaphone formation again. So it's a four hour formation. And the screen line is going to come in around the 1830 level. And just one more thing to consider, even though we're above it right now by a dime, is that if you go all the way back to the high of the move in 2016, this 1838 level is 61.8 back. Next level is 1961. So I would just say for the first time, and yesterday we didn't have any divergence. See, we just kept plowing along. Fortunately, there was this break for me to do a few things last night, but here we're not confirming. Uh, anyway, the gold is uh, definitely uh, lagging. That's why the gold-silver ratio is doing what it's doing. So uh, are we going to take out this high in gold, or is this going to end up being a failing rally? That's a question. In fact, when I look at the board right here, including the ARP trade, which I took uh, – I came out of yesterday down here. We rallied all the way back up to the failure again. 9131 is the off number, so uh, we could still fail here, even though the cable was under a lot of pressure. And the cable, I believe, did put in a three driver before it failed. Yeah, see? Yeah, one, two, three up here. One, two, three. So cable looking negative. Euro after Friday that we're back down here. It's got to dig in its heels if we're going to have some type of uh, dollar pullback. The dollar again, same type of situation. It's right back to where I covered before the collapse on Friday. So I'm in an I don't know mode right here. And I uh, used to feel kind of, uh, you know, uh, embarrassed to say it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Itai, no. You're you're in Israel, though. That's how you know Punim. It's a Hebrew word, not Yiddish. Okay. All right. So, uh, I'm not a you know I'm not as uncomfortable saying I don't know what to do today. So I'm not going to chase the downside in the S and P's. I'm not going to chase the upside in silver. In fact, you know what? The difference in me now and the way I look at markets compared to the way I used to look at markets. So here's an even better look. 1830, keep an eye on that, and silver, is 
say for example, I took a hit in an instrument and uh, at, let me ask you guys if you do the same thing. So then I would just uh, say, you know, I'm not going to trade it for a while. I'm going to look around and I was wrong. So uh, I'm just not going to trade it for a while. And I look for different things to do. Uh, now what I do is when I'm wrong, I stick with it and stay focused on it and look for uh, reasons because, you know, being a day early can be costly in this business. Just one day. Okay. It just shows you, you know, it's not like I've been bearish the metals all the way up. Uh, in fact, this was my first failed uh, entry. I'm still fighting it, but you know, uh, in the gold counter trend was right here for this break and then was right Sunday night on the short up here. And this is the first metal trade in a while that I had heartburn. So I'm staying with this. So I'm selling more. Uh, I have divergence now and I'll add on back underneath this. So the difference is instead of letting go and going away and saying, no, oh, you know, I, I just, you know, I just can't trade the silver. It's too wild for me. And looking at the yen or looking at the euro or looking at oil, um, I'm going to stick with this because uh, the idea still has some merit, probably more merit now that we've accomplished what I didn't think we were going to accomplish this week. When I, we came in this week, uh, you know, I thought maybe mm, 1790, something like that. But then, you know, I did the weekly fibs and here we are. So uh, if you're long, congratulations. And if you're uh, waiting for an idea from me today, uh, the only thing I'm really so focused on is to see if we get a Failure in the silver after every short must have been completely squeezed out because I know how I felt yesterday. So I'm sure I'm, I wasn't the only one trying to top pick it. So, I, you know, that's a great part of being part of a team because I really don't have to know what to do to help you guys out in face because. There's so many talented guys on our team, let alone the chat room. So besides, uh, look at it, we have a lot of active patterns in place. So I don't know what to do, but these guys do. So it looks like it's uh, not the easiest week, Euro pound. Okay. So I'm just going to turn it over to, you know, Blake every day. I haven't... Uh, ever seen a day since I've been part of the team here where Blake doesn't have some idea of, uh, you know, something he's doing. In fact, I remember interviewing him on FX Street and I said, well, Blake, do you, you know, are you ever flat? And uh, he says, he said, no, you know, he always has uh, his uh, at least toe in the water, knowing Blake, it's at least a foot in the water. And he's always trading. So uh, he's taken over right now. And that's the beauty of being with the best team in FX and other instruments across the board. How are you, buddy? Good, good. Uh, you know, it's August and it is, um, you know, the last couple of days of summer. You know, yeah. it's real, 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 real thin liquidity. And uh, I mean, you, 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 you pointed out you're seeing these, this huge, huge move in metals. Um, we have this like massive moving gold, mainly silver, silver though. Right? Yeah, silver is yeah. huge. I mean, we're above, you know, we're above our uh, uh, monthly six one eight. There's a monthly oh, you had a six one eight. I, I must have taken my fit. See, that's uh, something else. Everyone takes their fibs sometimes from different areas because I had it coming in at uh, thirty eight. Is that where you had the sixty one eight? Thirty four. Uh, what's the difference? A nickel. Uh, XA, hold on. I'm gonna go XAG, USD, and then w what uh, we can do is we can actually just take something a little separate here. So oh. I was looking at I was looking at this possible. The, uh, That's Andre, Andre actually corrected me. Is it uh, what Andre talked about yesterday? Yeah, he 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 calls it a um he calls it a crab if it stops here. But um, you'll see that you know we this is the 
the 618 from the highs of 2016, 2016. Okay. Yeah, we're so, it's about the same number. And yeah, we're I mean, it. We're, we're through it right now. Uh, obviously, yeah. where we close by the end of the day is probably going to be pretty important for um, for this particular uh, instrument. So, you know, seeing where we close today is going to be really important. If we if we close back, you know, 18. 20 um then you know i think that might set up for reversal but you have to wait till the end of the day you gotta you gotta see yeah. where we close i mean it's it's important right because right now you know the market's getting squeezed and uh you you're in a situation where you've got just people pushing through liquidity like you know you know uh screw it just buy me some you know get out of whatever you got blah 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 when you got you know all the assistant traders um you know, sitting at the desk. So, you know, it, it, if we close, like I said, if we close near the lows, uh, we're, which the overnight low is around, you know, 18, 10 or so, yeah. if we close around those overnight lows, then you have to think, okay, maybe that's it. But until that happens, you know, silver is going to continue higher. I, I did pull this up this morning because I was kind of curious, you know, um, uh, XAGUSD. So here's your, uh, or XAU, sorry. XAU, oh, the gold silver ratio. XAG. Yeah, here's here's your gold silver ratio. Wow. And what I, I what well, what I was looking at is that we still have some downside if we do an A B C D, and then we have trend line support. So you know, gold is continuing lower, and it might go a little bit further. So silver might actually stretch its legs a little further, or maybe gold just you know collapses right now before um we see silver you know, peak yeah. silver peak yeah so so is that almost uh you almost have equality down there at your blue line from the first break yeah yeah this is this is it it's a, it would be okay. an equal move a b c d yeah. so um you you gotta wait for us to hit this trend line before applying silver to the short side that would be my opinion yeah i think you're um, right yeah, so you know, now you were, you were talking about uh, gold, silver, so that's why that's why I was uh, referencing it. Now, I'm, I'm personally I'm long some euro yen. I'm not happy about. It. I've got uh, I've got um, my stops aren't too far away. They're about um, they're about uh, twenty five pips away from where we're currently at. But I like the candle it's putting in right here. Yeah, I mean it's you know yeah it's it, it potentially is, it could could reverse, but I'm not excited about it. I'm not I'm not adding down here because really what I want to see is I want to move I want to move above this resistance. Yeah. Um, so that resistance, which is you know basically channel support, and it's not just it's not just the uh, the euro yen. I mean I'm looking at I'm looking at, I mean I'm the only one that I'm long, but. Uh, you know, the pound yen has to get back above uh, this resistance. And obviously with the news out of um, uh, the UK overnight where um, uh, Johnson wants to, he, he wants to, you know, close well, Parliament. Par yeah, I heard now. about that over the weekend. Yeah, yeah. and I'll, I'll let Stelios talk a little bit more about okay. that here in a bit. But, you know, the Aussie yen, New Zealand yen, Canadian yen, all of these yen pairs are, in my opinion, um still at risk for reversing but but you know i've got to see it come out of like you know some of these stronger pairs first like you know the 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 kiwi yen might be a candidate um that that's got to you know move out of this move out of this um uh channel first or maybe you know the euro yen you know one of those that have been holding up so you know as long as they they're they're contained by these trend lines then you know, there's no reason to get too excited about it. That's why I have, you know, a small position. I'm not adding to it. I don't feel that I need to be, you know, buying aggressively down here, especially with yields so weak. I mean, you know, you got bond yields uh, or bonds, um, excuse me. And um, one of our, one of our traders, Chi, who's in our, in our chat room, he, he'd been gone for like the last few weeks. Uh, and he would, he was mentioning, you know, how, you know, the, these bonds are crazy. I mean, you look at, you know, the 10 year and the 30 year yield, let me go over to the yields really quick. Where are they? Yeah, a lot of people are looking for uh, new record lows in the 10 year yields. Which yeah. Like 133 or something like that. Y yeah. And we're, we're at 145 and the, and the 30 years yielding less than 2%. Yeah. I mean, it's a, you know, 1.92 or. <laughs> 
Excuse me. Sorry, I didn't mean to Not yawn Monday. on you guys, but uh, I, man, I'm I I pl- I, I played yeah. tennis last night until late, and then uh, I just it was whew, man. I slept like a I slept like a baby. Anyway, um, uh, the but if you look at look at bonds, I mean they're still really strong, and uh, look, I mean here's the ten year approaching, yeah. you know, trend highs. You got boons that are you know at new highs, new all time highs here. And um, while the, all of these fixed income instruments stay strong and yields stay weak, um, it's good for know, metals. It, it is good for metals, and it's it's hard to it's hard to be long the yen pairs True. because that's going to keep the yen relatively um, relatively uh, uh, contained. And even if the yen you know sells off a little bit, is it is it is it you know, are, are they really going to go anywhere as long as fixed income continues to stay strong and yields stay down? And, and realistically, it, you know, the, the answer to that question is no. Uh, I think one of the scariest moves right now is the cable. Um, we were, we were talking about the cable at the 123 level. And, and matter of fact, I bought it yesterday at 12280. I, 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 tr- I bought it a couple of different times yesterday when we were at 122.80, right right around here, and we'd probe up towards 123, and it'd fail, and I'm like, eh, I'll just get out of it, take some profits. And I was, I mean, literally scalping it for like seven or eight pips multiple times yesterday, and I just said, oh, man, screw it. This thing is just not going to break out. It, it, it tried multiple times to get above 123, and I'm like, eh. I'm just not going to, fortunately, I didn't stick around because um, that the, as, as I pointed out in the, in last night's analysis in the, whoops, in the, uh, in the pound. And let me, let me point this out. Here's basic technical analysis. Um, the end of day analysis, bulls will be disappointed that we close below the channel resistance and 123. However, the pair continues to hold up well, which could allow for a squeeze to the 123.75 breakdown point if we break today's highs, support is seen back at 122. And so we, obviously we didn't break those highs, we failed. And then the news came out, you know, so, you know, it slumped. And, uh, and, and obviously we're sitting around 122 right now, but, you know, we probe back below. And the fact of the matter is, um, unless we have, okay, you got, you got, and, I'll, and I'll, I'm going to ask Delios to come in here in a second, see if he has anything to say. Um, uh, unless we have um, the, the, you know, the, the, the parliament block a no, no deal Brexit, I think the risk is that we move um, lower, you know, because Boris Johnson seems like on a, you know, on a hell bent, um, uh, uh, idea of, um, you know, just, you know, forcing a no, no, no deal Brexit. So Stelio, so you here this morning, I would say, oh, he's, he, he had to, he had to leave for a couple minutes. He'll be back in a few moments. So, um, so anyway, uh, that, that's, that's the one thing that's scary about the cable. And I, I'd be really worried about the fact that we failed. Look, if, if you, you take these last, last time we consolidated and you take these highs here, we failed at a 50% retracement. So the fact of the matter is 123 matters, okay? 123 is key resistance and that's going to be it. So what I'm going to do for you guys this morning is what we're going to go through the majors and we're going to, we don't have any data today. And I'm just, I'm just happy to get through this week because frankly, Um, this is the last week of summer. Um, and, and don't, and one of the, one of the other things I want to point out is don't, um, uh, come in on Monday or on Tuesday rather, because Monday is going to be a U.S. holiday. Don't come in on Tuesday thinking that liquidity is going to be back at full speed. Uh, or, or full capacity. It's going to take a couple of weeks for the market to really ease back into full liquidity. And I like to tell everybody that right at the end of this holiday, because what happens is, um, you know, you get everybody sitting back down at their desks, you got meetings, you got figure that, you know, everybody's talking about how they're going to position themselves 
in the markets. It's not like instantaneous liquidity, but we'll start to see it ease back in this next week. But it should be very, very thin the next couple of days. Also, to, also one other thing that I want you guys to keep in mind is that we do have, um, from what I'm reading, some pretty strong rebalancing coming into the market. Uh, with portfolio rebalancing, which is is supposed to be equity market positive the next couple of days. So um, if you're short equities, that's fine. Um, just keep in mind that there might be bouts of buying coming through the market. Um, you know, it, 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 like just you might be sitting there and all of a sudden the market, market spikes up, you know, uh, 15 handles in the S&P and you go, what the hell just happened? That, that, that happened yesterday. And they, these are all like, just in my opinion, rebalancing flows. You got uh, like the S&P was down here and then all of a sudden it went whoop and everybody was like, what, 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 what just happened? And uh, you know, there was, they didn't see any news, but I think a lot of that happens because of the rebalancing. So just be really careful if you're short equities that, you know, you know, you don't get a move like that. Um, and you're like, well, what just happened? And that, that's typically what what probably just happened. Um, hey, morning, Blake. Sorry, um, did you look for me before I was out for a few minutes? I, I did, uh, you know, uh, that's all right. I was just uh, gonna, uh, before I get into the analysis of all these majors, uh, I was gonna ask what your opinion was about uh, the, the news overnight regarding um, yes. uh, Boris okay. Johnson, yeah. Yes, so basically, like you said, uh, uh, Boris Johnson is going to ask the Queen to suspend Parliament um, and uh, there's a big fuss made about this, although we have to say this happens every year. So it um, happened in, uh, in the last four years for uh, roughly, you know, three weeks or whatever it is. So, I mean, obviously, it's a, ve it's a very different situation now because we have the 31st of October deadline, but this isn't something unheard of actually it's it's quite common every year and um but the timing is a thing you know it's uh it's basically going to give fewer days to parliament to figure out some kind of a solution if they're going to figure it out and so that's uh that's why the pound is uh, not liking it today but overall we've had weeks and months of um, trying to find a solution. I don't think a few extra days are gonna make a huge difference, although they will make a difference. So, um, uh, you know, will this be the make or break factor? No, I don't think it will be, but obviously the markets don't like it. So to just to react to the, to the market movement, yes, it's not a positive um, uh, headline, but I don't think it's, it's what's gonna um, be the, the you know a catalyst for Brexit, no deal Brexit or deal Brexit. The, the end, my, uh, it's not going to be the end all be all, right? That is, that's my opinion, and I think that's okay. probably uh, uh, the way it is. So, okay, um, yeah. So you know, with 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 that being said, um, I think you know, you know, I was pointing out technically, as long as we stay below one twenty three and twenty three now, one twenty three is this is the big. Uh, in my opinion, this is going to be the big kahuna. It is the channel resistance. It is, um, uh, you know, obviously the the failure point. And you can call it a fifty percent retracement. Um, if you draw it from over here, it's it's close to the thirty eight percent retrace or close to the six one eight. Um, you know, that would be the last drop. Would be the six one eight right here. It, as long as we stay below this one twenty three level, there's really no reason to be long the cable. And I think the risk is now starting to build that we, we, we head towards the lower end of the channel, which would be close to 119. Um, but, you know, if we do, in the event we do break 123, it's going to be a probably a big deal. And it's going to be a big uh, event, um, you know, squeeze type of event for the, for the market. So um, let's, uh, let's really quick. And, and by the way, did you want to throw anything about precious metals before I, uh, hand it over or I, I start on the analysis of the majors? Well, yeah, I mean, they've been, uh, relentless over the past few weeks and I was actually out with a friend this morning, uh, having coffee. Mm -hmm. He used to be, um, used to work at Goldman and the UBS, very experienced trader and, um, he trades PA now. And, um, uh, we were talking about precious metals and he was saying, you know, what do you think about precious metals? I said, look, what we're seeing now, because he, he actually said to me, oh, look at uh, USD yuan is rising and gold is not dropping or, uh, yeah. you know, uh, other correlations like that. I'm not saying, look, I said to him, look, what we're seeing now, these are all short-term relationships. 
um, you know, uh, uh, USD yen, uh, sorry, USD yuan goes up, gold goes down. That's what usually happens. But now what we're seeing is this race to the bottom of of most currencies, you know, most um, developed economies, we've said this many times, they're running big, de big deficits. Um, credit creation, money creation is going up all the time. At some point, people are going to realize that, um, mm -hmm. you know, real assets like gold and silver or whatever else you want, um, they're going to outperform. And I think what we're seeing is it doesn't matter what one currency is doing against the other. Um, with yields so so low and falling and really no prospect of them going higher, metals are just going to keep going. Obviously, nothing goes in a straight line, like you very correctly said. DSI, you know, positioning is quite long now in, uh, in gold and silver. That's going to correct at some point, which will probably give us a little bit uh, of a leeway to get into a better level. I want to go long again, but uh, we're not getting Where? it at the moment. Where, bro? Well, I, I would love to get um, somewhere in the mid-17s for silver. Okay. So, like, you a will. or lower. I, I think hope you'll so. get it. You will. Yeah. You know yeah, what? I, mean, I, I hope could... so too. That's like the if 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 we can buy, like you when you when you look at like a you know technicals, right? You know the technicals help us you know guide guide our you know decision making on where we can be buyers of 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 you know certain things. And like I I, I firmly agree with your assessment. And uh, you know I look at let me see if I if did that no let me duplicate it. Uh, clone. There we go. And by the way, Boris Johnson, uh, he proved one thing. Uh, he's not as far right as Hitler because Hitler burned down the Reichstag. Okay. Uh, all Boris wants to do is shut the doors for a few days. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if you take, you take like silver, for example, I think mid 1750s is good because if you, if you look at this area right through here, that's probably your buy zone. So, you know, you, you don't, you, you, you know, people, the problem with most traders is they get caught up in what we call FOMO, you know, the fear of missing out. And they're like, oh man, look at this big move. You know, I'm going to miss silver. Silver's going to, you know, 20 bucks it, and, and it, or $25 or whatever it is. And realistically, it probably is. I mean, if you bought silver today, closed your eyes for six months, you're probably going to be happy you did so. But between now and then, is there a better place to, to, to get long? My opinion is, yeah, if we can get a move down to like, you know, uh, 1750, I mean, you're talking about a 5% move lower and, you know, on a, on a, you know, a 5% move, you know, if it's going to 20, I mean, you know, you're, you're, you're talking, uh, you're talking a, you know, out of a 20% move higher from, 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 uh, or excuse me. You, you can do it this way on a, uh, let's just say, let's just say a 14% move higher. If you can get a 5% better, you know, entry, you, you make 20% versus 14% or something like that. So what I would, what I, what I do is I just try to find good technical levels to be a buyer. I mean, I've been very bullish precious metals, but I can't buy them up here. I, it, 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 it would break every rule that I follow um, to buy it. And a lot of you might say, well, how about if we short it? Just because I don't think something's a good buy doesn't mean it's a good short either. Because, you know, I, I, in, in my mind yesterday, I was looking at silver going, yeah, it's probably a good short up here. And, and, if, you, and if you shorted silver yesterday, well, you know, you're down 2% this morning. So, you know, or you were down 2% at one point. I mean, so it just because, it, you know, it's not a good buy or I don't think it's a good buy right now, doesn't necessarily mean it's a good short either. Okay, that, so if you think you, there might be a buy at uh, 1750, you'll just sit, you won't short it at all until we get down there and then you're a buyer. Yeah, that, that what that's, you're that's, that's the important part of like Forex analytics, for example, is having a bias, you know. Yeah. You're like you're like oh you know I'm I've got a I've got a bias uh, it like here here's a here's a good example like in the dollar Mexican peso it has got a very bullish bias but that doesn't necessarily mean that you want to buy it right now yeah you want to buy it all green on, and silver Blake uh, probably well it looks like harmonics oh. got a got a got a um, uh, Andre's a, uh, yeah, Andre's got, yeah he's got a contrarian bear 
reversal okay. up here. So he's looking for a move down from here. But, you know. It's funny. I have the same target he does. So, Stell, uh, uh, you, uh, 1750, uh, uh, I, I pay attention to Andre's work because I actually have a megaphone line down around 1550 and now I'll shut up. Well, yeah, it, I always look at his work for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and so, so, it, and, and you have to imagine that most, most harmonic work is going to be counter trend anyway. Yeah. So taking that, that into account, you can say, okay, well, you know, if, if, if we, we've got mostly a bu bullish trend here and harmonics is pointing us the opposite direction, that usually means that, you know, let's get bullish on some sort of counter trend move. And, you know, right. if you're, if you're trading harmonics, you can say, well, I just want to, you know, I'm going to try to cherry pick my way in and, you know, try to reverse. That's fine. But uh, for me, you know, trading the way that I trade, I'll just be looking for a dip to buy. So, um, so thanks for your comments guys. And, and by the way, I'm going to be going through these majors really quick. I, I would, we don't have any data coming out um, while we're on air today. So uh, if you have any comments, on my analysis as I'm going through, this is predominantly for Stelios and for for Dale. Um, feel free to jump in. Um, but let's start with the Euro dollar. And this is something, by the way, this uh, bias chart will probably be something that I'll do the next couple of days, uh, just as it's it's relatively slow. And uh, I want you just to get in the, you know, get in the um, frame of mind of what I do on a daily basis and what Paul Franco does for, um, for analysis. And by the way, I, I just said that and I, I need to take that back. Steve is going to be here tomorrow and Friday. Um, so I'm going to just do this bias chart with you guys uh, today. That's I just I forgot about that. I don't want to take away from Steve's time. So the euro dollar. Um, and by the way, I did have a bid in the euro overnight. I already canceled it because, you know, when, when I'm in front of the computer, there's, you know, no reason for me to put in uh, bids and offers when I know where I want to buy it. Uh, I had a bid to buy the, uh, the Euro dollar at 11075. It never got there. Um, but that's a 78% retracement. I was, I was looking for basically a full retracement of this move and see this, uh, resistance right here. My, I, I had an order, you know, placed right here to, to get long. This is a 78% retracement. We didn't quite dip down there, but I do think that's support today. So one, 10, 75, it's only 10 pips away from where we're at, but on a Friday or uh, excuse me, on a, on a, um, on a, uh, uh, a weekday during the last week of August, uh, 10 pips is a lot. You, you may not. You, you may not, uh, we may not see a lot, a ton of volatility. So waiting for the Euro dollar to get down to that support might be the wisest idea. And that's, that's what I'm looking for. Now resistance right now is at one, we can call it 111. That's right here. Okay. 110.97, but I'm just going to mark it up as 111. 111's resistance today. And I wouldn't be surprised if we sit in this 25 pip trading range all day. Okay. I do believe we're in a range. Uh, the reason why I believe in a, we're in a range, you might say, well, we're in a downtrend, Blake, but we're, we're in a descending wedge, but very tight trading ranges. We're not going anywhere right now. Um, so what I'm, hold on. I thought I just heard something come on about the UK, but nothing. Um, but I'm I'm looking at the uh, the euro, and if it breaks above 111, that might you know loosen things up a little bit. We might get us back to 111.15 or you know 111.20. But I I think that and and actually if we want to, we can write this 111 111.15, and we're in a range. All right, let's go to the cable. So the pound, um, I don't think there's anything to do with it. There's anything to do right at this moment. I do, I will tell you that 123 is key resistance, no matter it, which way you slice it. If for some reason, like let's say news comes out here in the next, uh, uh, I don't know. Um, um, if, if, if news comes out right after, you know, like after we're done here and, be, you know, before UK goes home for the day that uh, Parliament's going to push a bill to block a no deal Brexit, um, the pound could spike. 
Uh, and on that type of event, uh, the, the pound might actually spike to 123, maybe even above. So uh, you, you got you to keep your, you know, got to keep your, um, um, uh, you know, mind open to that. Now, I do think that support right now, which is really critical, is going to be this trend line support that comes through here. So it is going to be around, let's say, 121.40, roughly. And my opinion here is if we break through 121.40, we are going back to 120 and possibly below, back towards channel support. So you, you can, you know, look at it like, you know, we're dropping way, you know, this, this should happen on a break below that trend line. Because, you know, 618 retracement, uh, channel resistance, couldn't break, probably takes us back through to channel support. So just some food for thought. All right, the Aussie. Um, there's nothing to do with the Aussie. Uh, while we're below this blue trend line right here, and you can just call it that resistance that comes in at 67.90. That's resistance. 67.90, that's key resistance. We are in a bearish trend. Uh, if you're if you're bull, the good news is that we're not we're not making lower lows for now. For now, I get I should I should very much uh, say for now. But um, intraday support, low high, spike low right here six one eight. That would be key for me. It would be sixty seven and a quarter. Um, I had been looking at the Kiwi thinking, man, I'd really like to buy it. I haven't, and I'm not going to do it until after we break through this trend line. But there is a place where I would consider on a dip, okay, the Kiwi, because a lot of you look at the Kiwi and you're like, man, this thing's been beaten down so bad. Where, where would I be a buyer? Well, you have a multitude of 161% extensions coming in at 163 you notice I have an alarm set up there, right there, okay, at 163. The reason why I have an alarm set up there because it is a dual 161% extension of this move and of this move right here, low to high, the last you know move up from that spike low. 161% extension comes in right there as well. So if we get a dip to 63 cents, I'd probably try to pick it up on a counter trend trade. Until that happens, we are in a bearish trend. And until we break above now, 63.85, it is bearish. 63.85, and that's trend line resistance and that's capping any move. All right. Okay, let's go into the Canadian. Here's the Canadian. Uh, Canadian's been a disaster mess trying to trade it. I I did trade it at some point at the end of last week. Oh, you know what I, I tried to do really yesterday? Uh, I did try to short this thing. Um, I, but it was, I didn't even, you know, tell the chat room. It was one of those things I'm like, you know, I'll, I'll try to sell some here. And then I got run over real, like within like maybe 10 minutes. So, um, and then I was like, screw that. So you'll, you'll see here, we hit the, um, this was a 38% retracement at 132.60, uh, it was 69. And it spiked up there and it came off and I sold it at 62 and then it spiked right back and I put my stops right above the highs. I, I took like a seven pip loss and I was like, you know, screw that. I'm not even playing with it. Um, Cause I really don't have a good read on the Canadian uh, right now. And I, and I know I've been saying that for the last couple of weeks and frankly, the, you got this little trend line that comes into play around 133.37 then you got some spike highs up here and 133.50. Uh, I'm going to write down 133.50. That is key. It is key resistance right now. Okay. Um, we are in a range. Support for the day is probably going to be these spike lows. You can see them all through here. There, there, there. There, 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 there. Okay. So any dip back down to 132.80 
is going to be support. Uh, one, one of the reasons why I was also selling the dollar Canadian is the guys in my office um, uh, have been trying to sell spikes in this thing. And um, uh, yesterday they got run over too. You know, they, they don't make money every day either, you know. Um, and yesterday I was trying to sell some too. And I was like, you know what? I'm done with it. I'm not even going to mess with it. All right. Um, let's go into the Swissy. Now, one of the other uh, one of the other orders that I had overnight to to sell or to to get into was the uh, dollar Swiss. I had an order to sell at ninety nine cents. Didn't even come close to getting triggered, but uh, but here you can see why. Okay, I am playing this ninety five or uh, excuse me ninety seven cent to ninety nine cent range. Uh, so I was hoping we might hit the, you know, this upper trend line right here at 99 cents and then reverse, uh, not even close. So right now, and those orders are all canceled. Um, right now, what do you do with the Swissy? Your guess is probably better than mine right now because uh, resistance is going to be 98.80 and support is at 97.15 there's nothing to do you're going to just get stuck in the in the in the crossfire um if you try trading this thing right now uh i mean it's really you know just a it's a mess the 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 dollar swiss there's nothing to do and you have to trade the extremes of this range so what i what you know what i was looking to do is i'd sell that I'd probably be a buyer down there if we got down there, but there's no reason to be trying to figure out what it's going to do right now because it's a flip of the coin and, you know, flip a coin of is not the way you want to try to trade the markets. Okay. Here's the, here's the U S dollar Norwegian Krona. We are back at the 161% extension uh, move. I know Stelios probably is biting his lip wanting to say something about the, Norway right now, but it is, it's strong and there seems to be no reason to be on the short side of this at this moment. You can try picking it off up here at the highs, but I think while we're above, you know, uh, 882, uh, it's just, it's bullish. Um, now near term support is going to be right here at 893. Fundamentally, it should be so much lower. But, yeah, uh, you know, I could, I could, I could argue that fundamental argument with a lot of things, right? Yeah. But, but is it? But do, do fundamentals necessarily matter at this point in time for anything? You know, it's. It, I mean, it's. Yeah. It's. 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 I. I mean, I hear what you're saying, but it is still viewed as a commodity currency. And right now commodity currencies are so weak all across the board. So, and this is just another one, you know, that is just, you know, fits that mold. Right. So I, I, I hear you. I hear you still. Um, <laughs> resistance is at nine Oh four sixty, which is the recent high. So you can say 9.05. And, and I don't know if you knew this, but from, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I shorted it at 9.03 or 9.02 when we were up here. I shorted it. <clears throat> I think I ended up making a few, you know, I think I, I, I closed it on a dip back below nine, but it was a very hard trade. It wasn't an easy trade. And uh, I think shorting this thing is still, you know, proving to be very difficult. So um, just, you know, think about that. Uh, US dollar, Swedish crown. Let's go to Swedish crown. So here we are with the, the SEK up against highs. Um, I thought this failed breakout would have yielded a bigger response to the downside. Personally, um, I haven't been trading this, the Swedish Krona. However, it's really strong. And if you don't know why it's strong, because y y it's at, like you know 20 year highs i mean it's 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 wherever it's like 17 year highs or something I mean, it's extremely strong and um what i would pay attention to right now is basically that 
which, which you can say roughly while we're above this trend line support, there's no reason to be on the short side. So that's right now that comes in at uh, 962. Oops, 9.62. This is bullish. Also bullish. Uh, resistance right now is at uh, 973. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the peso. I skipped over the peso. So the peso, uh, I, I blogged about it yesterday. It's strong and it, with, with stocks staying pretty heavy, it's gonna keep it elevated. Uh, I think that a break back below this support, you see that's a breakout point for this, you know, like cup and handle or whatever, uh, a break back, below 1989 would be a bearish event. That would, um, 1989. And this would be key because if, if you think about this, this is major resistance, major. It comes in at 2015. We failed up there a couple of different times. That's really major resistance. That's why I put those asterisks there. But if we can't break the resistance and then we dip back below the breakout point here, that's gonna usher in some selling. So for right now, you have to be very careful with the dollar Mexican peso with any longs if we break back below 19, um, 19, basically 19, uh, 1988. Okay. So just keep that in mind. And I'm, and I'm not doing anything with the peso right now. I, I did, uh, sell it yesterday, uh, at 20.06 with, uh, one of our other traders, Martin. And then, uh, he closed his better than I did. I closed my like 20.003 or 03. He closed his like 20 at zero one or something like that. But you know, I, I, I could see myself selling it on a move up to this resistance. Cause you, 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 you know, where your, you know, where your risk is. Um, but, and, and also if you, if we got to dip down in 1990, that might be a place to buy it. If you think that stocks are going to roll over, but I think overall, you know, you just have to be really careful. This is a very, um, uh, right here is a very pivotal area for the for the dollar max and so it's going to be easy to get whipped around here uh these these levels um let's go over to the dollar index dollar index still extremely messy um you could probably do this okay it's a four hour chart Resistance, and we know that resistance is really critical up here. Uh, this 98.45, and you can see this low right here. That's support. Um, so intraday support is going to be at 97.88. We are in a range, in my opinion, with resistance coming in at uh, 98.45. Okay, last but not least, and then I'm gonna take any questions of that you guys are asking. So coach, if you can do me a favor and take a look at um, any type of comments or questions that we may have. That would be great. Did you hear me, Coach? I'll, I'll have a look as well. Okay, th thanks, though. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the, uh, last but not least, let's take a look at the dollar yen. So here's the dollar yen. Um, you know, I, I've, I've been monitoring this. The reason why I've been monitoring this triangle is because I am long the euro yen. So what I would love to see, and this is just me, um, you know, talking out loud. What I'd love to see is a break higher 
of this you know triangle but it, it it's not a perfect triangle by any stretch of the means but you can see you know because there's the spike high up here so i i took it with the the lower uh spike because i'm drawing through as many wicks as possible when i draw trend lines i try to go through as many you know touch as many um uh uh you know points as possible and so right now I think resistance in the dollar yen is at 105.90. If we break 105.90, and th th this is one thing I want to talk about. If we break through 105.90 uh, and we are in a range, whoops, in a range. If we break through 105.90, that might signal that we're heading back to 106.20, okay? But if that happens, you got to think about what, bonds might be doing. You might have bonds selling off, yields going down. You could have precious metals going down. So if you're trading bonds or precious metals, be on the lookout for that. Also, if you're not trading bonds or precious metals, but you see the dollar yen break above this resistance, then what I would be thinking is let's look at gold. Let's look at bonds. And let's see if bonds are selling off and gold selling off to confirm this move. If you don't see that, if you don't see gold going down and you, you see bonds are still rallying, that means that any move up here in at the 105.90 is probably going to be a failure. All right. So what I'm trying to say is use those correlations to, to confirm if this is going to be a breakout or not. Support, uh, you can see this is at 65, uh, 105.65 is held. Even just a few minutes ago, we dipped down, to, just, just as I was starting, we dipped down to uh, 105.66. I saw it dip down to 66 and it, and it started to bounce. And I'm like, that is really key intraday. Now, if we break through those lows, you also have to think that gold and silver are going back up and bonds are continuing higher in order for this to follow through to the downside. So 105.65 is going to be support. This is your bias chart for today. It's not exciting. It, you know, tells us that, you know, we see some dollar strength eking in, okay? But all the ranges are very tight. And do keep in mind, this is one of the last days of summer and one of the last days of August. So liquidity is poor, ranges may be tight, and also keep in mind there's supposed to be some strong rebalancing, portfolio rebalancing going into uh, month end, which that means that, you know, it's, it's stock market buying and that could cause some volatility in stocks but what we what we saw yesterday and i i, I well, last point i want to make before i ask delios if there's any any questions here um yesterday when we saw that buying come through equities it was towards the end of the day um it, there was very, there was zero response to the fx market zero all this move right through here that we saw in equities yesterday that move and that move higher, that was some re rebalancing um, flows, didn't affect the FX at all. So just think about that before you get too overly excited going, oh man, stocks are bouncing. I need to sell yen or, you know, buy dollars or whatever, you know, you're, you're thinking. Um, it, it, we just didn't see that type of response from the FX. So here's your bias chart. Stelios, uh, do we have any comments that have come in? Yes, we have. Well, we've got five minutes. So uh, we have two questions about oil, crude and uh, Euro Swiss. So maybe cover those and uh, okay. that's gonna take us to the end. So, so here's crude. And, you know, crude's interesting. Um, it, we had a, a, a big draw yesterday, uh, late in the day. Crude spiked up. And um, crude is, and, and yesterday at the close, we were probing this downtrend line and this downtrend line is not perfect so just keep that in mind that it could actually be up here it's not I, I try to like I, I was just telling you I try to hit as many points as possible when I when I see a you know a trend line uh, in this case um, we are slightly above but you'll notice where I have my arrow 
All right, this is the 50 day, the, the orange one, and the red moving average is the 200 day moving average. My two cents is if we get above this resistance, we may actually start to squeeze in crude. All right, and that, that's something that I'm personally paying attention to is I'm, I'm paying attention to crude if we get above the 50 and the 200 day moving average, that would take us back up towards 60, all right? But, um, the, and you can see the moving averages come in, you know, they're basically coming in right around the same level. And is 60 a lot? No, but you know, from, you know, 56 bucks to 60, I mean, it's, it's a decent move. And if you think about equities, and you think about equities and rebalancing, and if the stock market actually gets a little bit of a lift uh, higher, then that could be one catalyst that helps crude, you know, break higher as well. So that's that's what I'm looking at with crude. I'm not excited about crude. It's crude. I'm about as excited with crude as I am with uh, with the dollar Canadian, if that says anything. All right. So yeah. You know, I'd like to see where we close today. Uh, the last one was the Euro Swiss, Stelios. Yes, that is correct. Okay, let's take a look at the Euro Swiss, and this is a pair I haven't been looking at too much, but um, let's go over to the daily chart and let's zoom. Okay, so this was a range completion, right? See it right here, range completion and that extension was met. So that's all that is, right? And what we've done since that happened, because the last time I looked at the Euro Swiss was once we completed that. So that must have been two, two three weeks ago, okay? Um, now we're just consolidating along that support. Now here's, here's something I want, I want you to see. So let's zoom, zoom out, okay? That spike low is where we stopped. So a move below 108.30 uh, would be bearish. Now, in order for me to get bearish, the Euro Swiss, what I'd really want to be bearish is the dollar Swiss. So the dollar Swiss is the, uh, remember we're, we're talking 97 cents, it's huge. You know, I was talking about how we're kind of range bound in the apex of this triangle, I guess. So really fast if you guys don't know why that's such a big support in the dollar swiss that's a multi-year trend line that comes in at 97 cents so if we break through 97 cents in the dollar swiss that would signal to me that the euro swiss is probably ready to continue a breakdown you know below this one i think the smb has a trend line yeah, they probably do. I mean, they 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 definitely like to like to you know their traders levels. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, the the Euro Swiss, and then also we talked about the um, about the um, um, about crude. So, Coach, yeah, I know you have an interview coming up. Yeah, with the one of the best precious metal guys I know out there on Twitter. So well, what a great time to have them. This is a perfect time, especially, you know, talking about the gold silver ratio yeah. and about silver, where it's at on a. Cause on I a remember I basis. asked Dan about it uh, last time he was on and silver was, you know, the gold silver ratio was well over 90. And so it's going to be a great time to uh, revisit that. Yeah. And so um, it, it'll be interesting to see what his views are with silver. So close to that big, 618 retracement, uh, the big, you know, weekly, weekly yeah. level. Uh, and like I said, if, if you guys are trading silver or watching silver, like what I'd like to see in silver is where we close today. I think if the, in the daily chart, if we close, I mean, we're at the 618 right now, but if we close yeah. near the lows of the session, that, that would signal to me that, you know, that we might have a day or two of, of selling in silver and that could take us back down to 1750. I think that's possible, but yeah. From your be, lips, bro. You have to be really careful. Yeah, be careful with it. All right, uh, I'm going to pass it back over to you. You guys, uh, thanks everybody for for stopping in. If you like what we do here, you don't um, have to pass it to me, but oh, that's okay. okay. Yeah, I'm, I'll I'll leave it right here then. Uh, okay. Make sure make sure you visit Forest Park FX. 
Um, they are our webinar sponsors. Uh, they will help you find a broker that is best suited for your needs. So make sure you uh, get in touch with them. And guys, have a great one. Thanks everybody for, uh, for being here today. And I'm gonna let Dale take over with the interview. Thank you, Blake. Thank you. Awesome Thanks, guys. Man. Thank you. Okay, Dan, I just unmuted you. I want to thank you for coming back after some technical difficulties. I'm just waiting to hear you talk. Hi, Dan. Can you hear Hi. me? Yeah, Dan. Guys, thanks so much for uh, your persistence in coming back here. We had some technical issues this week. If you just hover your mouse around the drop-down menu, you'll see a green box that says share. And then if you click that, you'll be able to share the screen that you want to show. Okay, Dale. And what a great time to have you back. Uh, you know, I want to acknowledge you that, you know, one, how long ago was it the last time you were on? About six months ago or five months yeah, ago? Yeah, something like that, about six months. Uh, so, yes. I mean, almost everything you talked about has manifested. So yeah. uh, congratulations on being a steadfast bull in precious metals. There you go. So now you grab the screen. You see that green share box? Yes, I can see that. <clears throat> so you click that and then share. It'll show different, you know, the screens that you have up. And then when you click it, we'll see what you brought today. Okay, I'm not gonna use charts uh, uh, today. Uh, oh, okay. All right, well then, you know what? I'm gonna take it. So we could go over uh, some of these things that are happening in the precious metals. Uh, why don't we start with, uh, you know, the most fascinating thing besides the continuation of the move, Dan, it's been what's happened in the gold-silver ratio since you and I last talked. And I remember uh, asking you, and I remember your answer, uh, that gold was gonna lead it, and towards the tail end of the move, silver would kick in. Well, silver has definitely, you know, uh, kicked in. Maybe it's the tail end of this particular chapter, uh, but the gold-silver ratio definitely reverting back to still, I think, our extreme levels, 83. I remember it trading in the 40s, you know what I mean? So uh, with silver way outperforming, and if you could see my screen shows the gold-silver ratio, um, could this mean that we're at the tail end of this particular run in the precious metals and uh, correction could be due? Uh, Dale, I, I don't remember exactly what I said the last time, but uh, I do. It's, been, it's been my, uh, <laughs> my theory. <clears throat> it's been my theory for quite a long time that uh, uh, in this uh, uh, international monetary system reset, uh, gold will lead. Uh, right. Gold is the, the, the supreme etalon of uh, money, of currencies, yes. and silver is the poor man's gold. And I'm not using the term uh, poor man's in a derogatory way. Uh, silver has been through history linked to gold as a, a subdivision of, uh, of gold uh, uh, for people who cannot afford uh, uh, gold. So it's not in a negative sense that I use the term uh, poor man's gold. What does it mean? <clears throat> it means that in periods when we have a major monetary crisis, a currency crisis, a reset, s silver stops acting like, a, like an industrial metal. Okay. Uh, uh, traditional financial analysts uh, fundamental or technical are always surprised to see that uh, uh, silver doesn't doesn't respect their rules and if you look today silver acts more like a monetary metal than as an industrial but if you look at the fundamentals of uh, silver silver is supposed to be now mostly an industrial metal but as i said in a period of monetary crisis silver becomes the poor man's gold and starts to uh, correlate. It goes from 30, 40%, it all, it's always correlates to, to gold, but it goes down in good times. 
in uh, no monetary crisis. And in monetary crisis, the correlation goes up to 80%. So okay. uh, gold leads, you need to have gold to, to indicate that the crisis is coming, that the crisis is here for silver to follow and become a monetary metal. And it, it still, silver still gives me signals that it is not sure uh, yet if, uh, if that's gonna happen. Uh, it's, I still think that gold could outperform here. And there is something that can happen and it has happened uh, in uh, 2011. And that is you had gold moving in about six to nine months uh, in a quantum leap uh, about uh, 600, 800 dollars at once. So uh, that's what I'm watching right now. And you might see, I'm still seeing silver, not sure that this is the time and this is the move. But certainly uh, once the move, once gold gives the signal, uh, silver would outperform uh, gold, but not in the initial stages. So I wouldn't be surprised the ratio to continue uh, after a small correction, the trend line on the ratio uh, the long-term trend line, it's still up. Okay. All right. So here's what you were talking about in 2011. This is when gold shares uh, quadrupled on exactly. this big rally. So uh, peaking around 1900 and pulling back here. And we're, we're headed, uh, we, well, this was a big breakout. So was this the first indicator at this 1360, 1370 level uh, of the beginning of the currency crisis that you've been talking about for a long time, the reset. And as long as we stay above this 1360 level, um, the crisis continues. Yes, that, that is the signal. Uh, something that I want to mention about this chart, uh, there is a coincidence, incredible coincidence in uh, when gold hit uh, 1900, I knew it's going to be a correction uh, at uh, 2000 level. Uh, it had to have a correction. I did not expect the correction to be so big. Uh, drop or last almost, as long in time? Uh, and last as long as in time. But something that happened, we don't have the chart over here, but I, I, I wrote articles about it. Uh, what happened when it hit uh, 1900, uh, it corresponds to the 2008 crisis, uh, right after the 2008 crisis. Right. And that's when central banks went into panic and in collaboration with the IMF, they agreed to sell gold from the reserves of the uh, IMF. I think it was something around 400, if, uh, if my memory is correct, around 400 uh, tons of gold uh, the IMF has decided at that time to sell and to print a uh, 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 fiat uh, basket of currencies, the SDR, at the same time. So what the IMF did at that time, they decided to sell, but they don't sell it directly. They sell it through the BIS, the Bank for International uh, Settlements in Basel. So okay. they transferred the, the gold uh, to the BIS which so started, sneaky, how, how sneaky, huh? Yeah. So what were they so, trying to do? Like uh, uh, they announced it, but they didn't want the market to know when they were dumping? Exactly. So okay. that's when they decided they, they started selling that gold. Now, uh, they, they also said that uh, it shouldn't affect the market because the sales will be between central banks. And one of the central banks who bought was uh, the central bank, the Reserve Bank of India. But let's not be fooled, the market knows it. They, the market knows that there is a sell in the market. So it certainly influences. And if you superpose uh, a chart of the price of gold with the uh, starting of the selling of the uh, uh, IMF, it is incredible how, uh, uh, how the correlation, it's almost perfect, uh, almost one. That any, whis that any whispers of a repeat performance uh, with Christine Lagarde going to um, head up the ECB? Uh, she may have been there when that was happening uh, at the IMF at 2011. So she knows the 
she yeah. knows the play card. Yeah, uh, there is a difference this time around, uh, uh, Dale, that you have to pay uh, attention to. Uh, in 2008, there was a very strong, excellent collaboration between all the Western oh. Central Bank and actually even China and Russia. There was a coordination, there were swaps between the central banks. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, that... Yeah. that uh, That's uh, not here anymore. That is not here anymore. Donald Trump is definitely uh, a one-man show who doesn't want to collaborate, who hates the international collaboration. Uh, we've seen it with the G7 recently and the G7 in Canada last year. Donald Trump doesn't like international currencies uh, uh, like DSDR. So uh, the circumstances compared to 2008 are completely different. What I'm, what I'm worried today is that Donald Trump uh, is, is the type of guy, he's the bulldozer who doesn't, like, doesn't mind to go into bankruptcy. So, uh, oh, yes, he's the king of debt, he said. Exactly. So he has given signals all the time that he's ready to, he wants the dollar down. He wants to pull the dollar down. He thinks that he can control the, the down move and it's not going to happen. It's going to happen like Nixon. Nixon didn't expect the dollar to, to go down 85% against gold. He expected a correction and, uh, and then a new agreement, but he did not expect it that the dollar will collapse in such a drastic way uh, in about five to 10, not 10 years. In the first five years from 1971 to 75, the dollar lost 80 85% of its value. What were those years again? Uh, it started when, when he did it. The end of Bretton Woods? Yeah, it started in 1971. Okay. And the drop start, went up to about 1975, uh, uh, 76. Okay. okay. Uh, okay. Then, then the rest of the drop was much less powerful than, uh, uh, than the initial one. Okay, so you're 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 thinking that be careful what you wish for, Mr. President. Exactly, uh, they think that they can switch the economy on and off uh, uh, like uh, uh, like a, a, a robot, but yeah. once you start, it's like a war, a war, a revolution. You have to be very careful because you know how it starts because you are the one who starts it but you don't know how it's gonna end. And we have the best examples. We have Vietnam, we had Iraq. Uh, they did not finish at all the way that the, 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 right. the military West Point, uh, West Point uh, geniuses predicted. Uh, Dick yeah, Cheney. mission accomplished was not mission accomplished when he landed on the carrier. It exactly, was, because it was war, mission, mission uh, is gonna last another 10 years. Yeah, because war revolution, civil war, uh, take a life of themselves and become chaotic in a complex system. And that means that the, the outcome becomes unpredictable. Uh, it's, uh, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the butterfly effect. Uh, Lawrence, uh, a physicist, an American physicist, was trying to, to decide uh, to, to if, he, if he can create patterns, weather patterns, and predict them a month, two months, a year before. And he entered data into a computer in the early 80s, and it took weeks and months to do the calculations. So every day he was checking the data. He did the first uh, set of uh, uh, calculations, and then he came back to the lab and says, like any good scientist, let's recheck it. Let's redo the operations again to see if it confirms the, the original experiment. So he re-entered the data in the computers and asked the computer to graph again the pattern uh, that he entered with the isotopes and, and all that. And yep. every day at the beginning, the two lines were identical. You couldn't see the diff that there were two lines. Yep. But as as the time was advancing, he started observing that the green line, the second one, was diverging and making a different pattern with the red line, the original one. 
And he asked his engineers, uh, computer engineers, is that something wrong in the software? Did you, do you have a bug in the software? Because that doesn't make sense. I entered the same data in both of them. The graphs should be identical. When you, when you enter two plus two, it should always be four. Right. And uh, engineers, uh, software engineers were telling him, no, there is no problem. There is no bug in the software. So he couldn't understand it. And after months and months, the charts were completely different. Two completely different charts. And at the end, he realized that what happened is that when they did the second experiment, they copied the data from the original, the, the first experiment and re-entered it in the computer so they will not have to enter it by hand one by one. But the computer in the first experiment truncated the data from four or five uh, digits to uh, only two. So the new set of data that was entered in the second experiment was truncated. And it gave, every time it was doing calculations, it was making different results because he had those small errors of uh, 0.003, after each operation, it was becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. And he came with the principle that a butterfly that flaps its wings in Australia can create a hurricane in uh, New York or in Paris. Okay? Wow. Okay. So, so this the is ripple a, effect. Yeah. So over this time. Is the, and time distorts it. Exactly. So this is the problem with complex systems is that you switch something on and it creates a chain that you don't predict. We had that problem with Chernobyl and with uh, uh, Three Mile Island uh, uh, accidents. So uh, this is the problem is that if, if he, uh, that's what Nixon did. He said, I'm going to delink the dollar. It's going to make the correction that I want and then we'll go back. But it didn't happen this way. It created a chain reaction and gold was not in total control of the US government and produced a collapse of the US dollar from uh, almost $35 to, to announce to 850. Okay. Yes. okay. So th this is the problem that we'll see today again. Uh, uh, you had that sale, but I don't expect the IMF to do it this time around. Uh, the mood has changed, and even yesterday and the day before, you had uh, uh, the governor of the Bank of England, uh, Mr. Carney, who was governor of the Bank of Canada a few yes. years ago. And yes. when the crisis happened in 2011, he, wrote, he made a speech in Toronto in which he cautioned the international community of a Minsky moment, moment in the global economy, in the global debt uh, field and the currency field. The Minsky moment was mentioned by uh, uh, Miss Yellen uh, maybe a year or two later and you'd had Bernanke who, men who told, I think it was Jim Rickards in, in Korea, uh, that uh, the system, the present system is, is unsustainable, unsustainable, he said. And two or three days ago you had Mr. Carney again calling for an end of the uh, US dollar supremacy uh, system. So uh, signals are being given and at the same time you have central banks buying gold. Now they are not selling, they are not interested in selling anymore. They are buying extensively. We are very familiar with Russia and China. Yeah. Yesterday there was an article that uh, uh, banks controlled by the, uh, by the government of Russia, one of the banks has decided to move into the gold market extensively. So you have China who's buying gold, but they are not giving the correct data. They are, they are hiding information in my view. It's a speculation, but it's an educated guess after a lot of research. I think they are hiding their cards because they consider gold as the major, major card in their war against the United States, which they call the, the hegemon. Right. So, yeah. uh, uh, Vladimir Putin... You know what's interesting, has, Dan, is that, you know, you would expect that from China, you would expect that from Russia, but you wouldn't expect that from the UK. So even our friends or past or former allies that we've had since World War II 
are also entering the de-dollarization camp. So we have no friends left, do we? That's, that's, what, that's my complaint for Donald Trump, but because he decided to make everybody an enemy. Now I understand making the Chinese an enemy. I understand to make the Russians, but he made the Europeans, every Canada, Mexico, everybody. And he seems to believe that America can go alone and destroy the world and that the America is completely invincible because God is supreme and there is no God because God is United States. Uh, that mentality is very dangerous because it's completely false. It's, it, uh, it denies history and it denies the law of nature. And if you believe in God, it, it, it completely makes a mockery of God when you pretend that you, you are, and actually Donald Trump made certain allusions in the last few weeks and months that- uh, Well, he's uh, the chosen he's, one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All so, right. So, so uh, uh, this, you know, perhaps what's going on is that this was already in motion since the Min Minsky moment and the catalyst for it uh, coming to manifest uh, is the type of nationalism that's not only here, but spreading across the world, lack of cooperation and uh, countries around the world, uh, Poland, everywhere, uh, looking inward and not outward. And I've actually heard some people say that, you know, don't worry about any kind of world war because uh, everyone's going to be busy trying to hold their own social fabric together. Do you, are you in that camp that, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the reason for gold ownership for a long time has been, you know, uh, fear of a Middle East war, uh, wars, but uh, really what it could be is civil unrest and uh, social problems within each country that everyone's so busy taking care of their own problems, they don't have time for an international hot war. Yes, Al, I, I also agree. I don't see a world war, but I do see uh, the, the five major countries in the world today, United States, the European Union, Russia, China, and India. Each one has problems. Uh, uh, each one denies. Internally. The uh, United States, it is in a state of denial. It has major internal social uh, political problems that uh, uh, are ready to explode. Europe, the European Union also has structural, uh, they are different from United States, but there are still major problems. Russia appears very stable, but it has its own problems internally, social problems. Vladimir Putin has ignored uh, corruption, excessive corruption in Russia. India has its own problems. They've tried to to manipulate the currency by reprinting the low currency, by eliminating cash, and it was yeah. a disaster. China, yeah, what, what's that the first, was that the first uh, 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 international experiment in going cashless? And uh, have governments recognized that uh, it's not a worthwhile experiment, or do you still believe they're gonna go ahead with uh, the war on cash? Uh, they will still try to go with the war on ca cash, but it's uh, uh, India was a failure. Yeah. Uh, and uh, 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 I think I think that uh, uh, Dale, uh, something else that I want to mention to you is uh, if you listen carefully, you have the people in the Bitcoin community, the cryptocurrencies, okay. uh, saying, "Oh, the solution is the crypto, going uh, cashless and all computer-based uh, currencies," but. If you observe uh, the language of the central bankers like Carney, like uh, uh, Powell, uh, before Powell, Yellen, uh, 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 Draghi, uh, 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 Mrs. Uh, Nabiolina of the Bank of Russia, the, they all tested. People don't realize that because they don't pay attention to the words of, uh, of leaders. But if you listen carefully to, the, uh, to Mr. Carney, he said it a few months, I think uh, six, nine months ago, we've tested cryptocurrencies and it's not good. It's not good. There are major flaws. Uh, uh, the Federal Reserve, 
uh, I think it was Bernanke who said, we've been testing it. Uh, 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 recently in a speech, I think in, in, uh, in St. Petersburg, the governor of the Bank of Russia said, no way Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies in Russia. She said it clearly. And she said also, but I don't exclude the possibility of a crypto uh, ruble uh, backed by gold, which is different than a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. Okay. And backed by Chinese, nothing but having and supply. Yeah. The Chinese also mentioned recently that they are working on a cryptocurrency. Now, the crypto bugs. Uh, Bitcoin bugs usually jump and say, okay, this is it. China's going Bitcoin. China's not going Bitcoin. They are creating a crypto, what they call in the, in the field, uh, stable coin. They are creating a yuan, digital crypto yuan, which is nothing different than, a, than a, an old paper yuan. It's the same thing, only in a digital crypto form. Okay, so they are not going into the crypto, which is based on a mathematical formula that makes no sense. They're just digitizing what already exists. Uh, uh, I have, as a, as a physicist and, a, and a, a software programmer, I have to correct you because uh, you're repeating what, uh, what idiot uh, 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 Bitcoiners repeat all the time. We've been on digital money for 40 years, Dale. I know, you know, I went into the bank and asked for about six grand cash and they said they didn't have it. But, but Dale, I've been using uh, digital dollars we all and do. digital Swiss francs since right. 1980. Yeah. My, 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 digital, uh, uh, my digital card, debit card, from the Royal Bank of Canada and from... Uh, from uh, uh, Union Bank of Switzerland when I was living in both countries, uh, it was a digital. Uh, the, the, the currency system went digital, went electronic in the early 1980s. Since the 1980s, we've been on electronic money, on digital money. What is coming now, and it's not a revolution, it's a pure advancement, an upgrade if you want to call it, uh, it is this digital money, those digital dollars, those digital uh, Swiss francs, uh, euros, are now being securitized with a crypto technology. You understand? I, I do. It's, it's like your paper dollar. If you look at a paper dollar that was printed 100 years ago, you look at a paper dollar that was printed 50 years ago, and you look at the latest $100 US bill, uh, uh, crypto and Bitcoin uh, bugs don't realize that your paper $100 bill is cryptic. It yeah. has incredible cryptic information on it. Yes, the watercolor okay. marks every, everywhere, yeah. Yeah, okay. so they, they already, yeah, they could already track. It, uh, your hundreds are already trackable like a digital current. Like exactly. Digital there is all market. kinds of uh, uh, visual, uh, 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 optical uh, uh, coding on each bill today. They are not even on paper anymore. They are plastic with metal. Okay. Right. So, I, yeah. Yeah. So that's what's happening right now is that most of the central banks. And uh, here I'm, I also want to correct you on something. I might be wrong, but I, uh, I do, uh, I, in my research, the way I do research, I call it, and it's, uh, it's not just me, but the CFA Institute uh, in their exams, uh, uh, to, I don't know if they still do it, but when I first tried the exam about uh, 20 years ago, uh, they, uh, they were teaching the, the uh, an analysis called uh, mosaic analysis. What is mosaic analysis? Is that you don't specialize in technical analysis, in, in fundamental analysis, in geopolitical analysis. You look at all of them as different pictures from different angles. And you combine this puzzle of information detached uh, that appears insignificant when you look at it uh, individually. But when you put the puzzle together, it gives you a picture that you're not supposed to see and you're not supposed to know. 
So this is uh, kind of getting in inside information, but legally. So when I do this kind of uh, mosaic analysis today, I look at the global picture and what's happening. Since Donald Trump has declared uh, uh, the dollar as a weapon in his war uh, against the world, it has forced countries to uh, avoid the dollar, to find alternative systems to the dollar. Like the president of Russia said, we are not running away from the dollar, is the, is the dollar who's running from us, okay? okay. So uh, you have the whole world, Europe, Russia, China, India, who are trying to avoid using the dollar system. When I put the information from the Russians, from the Chinese, from Mr. Draghi, from the European Central Bank, from political leaders, there's been several papers in Europe that have been published by the European Union uh, and by the European Central Bank to force companies from now on to price their products and to charge in euros and no more in US dollars. The Russian government announced recently the same thing that it will go uh, uh, and use uh, only rubles or yuans or euros. So what I observe by doing this mosaic analysis, I'm seeing not each country for itself, as you mentioned before, kind of, uh, of uh, populist uh, nationalist, but I see a new realignment being created, being created internationally, isolating the United States, actually America itself isolating itself, not the world isolating the United States. And I see negotiations in the monetary system and in trade more specifically. They have differences politically and militarily. Europe is not in sync with China. Europe is not in sync with Russia. They have political conflicts. But on two issues, they seem to come close together more and more. And that is in trade and in, in the in, uh, international monetary system. There seems to be negotiations with the new payment system created by the European Union. Russia participates in it and China is in the background in the negotiations. And they have their own, they've developed their own, uh, you know, uh, system as well to avoid uh, our payment system, the SWIFT system. Haven't they developed a, a payment system to Chinese that's comparable to SWIFT? Exactly, uh, Dale. But what's interesting is that they are negotiating with Europe to link the European one to the Russian and Chinese. Okay. Okay, this yeah. is more important because it gives more power. Uh, uh, there is a, a historical, I've learned it in grade one in school, a, a, a story for children where you put a, a, a one road and you try to cut it in two, uh, to break it and it breaks. But if you put uh, 10 of them together, you cannot break them. It's a children's story that I learned in grade one and kindergarten. United States Trump believes that he can go alone. He doesn't need anybody. He's going to take a machine gun, a nuclear bomb, and threaten Europe, threaten Russia and China. He doesn't need anybody. He can go alone. And that's where I think it's wrong. And that's where I think it's hurting the dollar right now. It's, it's, it's going to be a collapse of the dollar. That, and then that's what's signaling gold. In the last okay. year. So, yeah. I mean, the dollar yet hasn't really capitulated at all, yet gold has already uh, is signaling the move away from the dollar. What do you think will be the final catalyst to take uh, the dollar down from, say, you know, this 98 level right around par to take us back down? Uh, is there any kind of event or it's just going to be a slow uh, erosion of time and then you reach a tipping point and it happens all at once and do you know what that might be that event that really triggers it just like uh, getting off Bretton Woods uh, could there be some type of uh, event in the future that you see uh, really being the last nail in the coffin of the dollar as a reserve currency uh, first of all, Dale, I have to uh, uh, slightly correct you. Uh, this this process started in 1971. Right. 
Right. Uh, it's a very long, it's a historical one. Currencies yes. don't die spontaneously. The British pound was not replaced by the dollar in one year, but in a period of 20 to 40 years. Okay. Uh, uh, the process uh, going but away. But World from War II dollar, was an important catalyst for that switch to take place, right? Yeah. So uh, there, uh, there still was an event that uh, uh, gave the U.S. primacy. Uh, what do you think could be an event uh, with all these different geo risks on the table that could uh, really accelerate the dollar's decline? You see, the re-election uh, of Donald Trump? Uh, you see, what, uh, what uh, my, my theory, my hypothesis has been for the moment is that uh, a collapse, a, a breakout uh, with quantum leaps of $500 uh, uh, moves in gold will come, I, I'm quite sure, but it's still a speculation from my part, it co will correspond with the collapse of the U.S. stock market, okay. and which will trigger a, a, a run from the dollar by investors uh, to protect their assets because uh, for the moment uh, uh, they've been invested in U.S. stock market. So uh, I think that okay. the, I think the trigger that could be and could start a, a, a run on the bank, as we call it, uh, a, a run on the dollar, as it happened in 1971, uh, that started in 1968 when the London gold pool collapsed. I think the same thing will happen if you see the stock market collapsing, since you have a lot of institutional money. It's not individual money today that runs the world. It's institutional money, pension funds, uh, mutual funds, uh, hedge funds, and uh, they heard uh, like anybody else. They pretend to be geniuses, but in reality, in panic, uh, uh, the, the great gurus of Wall Street and uh, the great political leaders and the central bankers will react the same way as an individual. They will herd running to the door like they did in 19... Uh, 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 between 1968 and 1971. Dan, uh, you know, I, I really never mind being corrected by you because every time you've been with me, I've uh, learned pearls from you. And you, uh, you talked today, you uh, dropped enough pearls to string a necklace. So yeah. uh, I, I really respect you. And right now I'm showing your uh, Twitter so that people know how to get a hold of you and continue to be educated by uh, probably, uh, you know, I, I really think you're one of the best out there for explaining what's happening to the monetary system and how to protect yourself. And at a, one of the most critical times in our history to, for people to educate themselves and to get prepared. So, uh, also, here, here's uh, where you could find Dan uh, and a lot of his content. Uh, I'm pulling up your, I don't know if you want to call it a website, Dan, or your blog. Or... Yeah, I, I usually put, I used to do much more. I'm in the process. I moved to Europe, so I'm in the process of changing things. Okay. Where did, where'd you go in Europe? Uh, France. You know, oh, interesting. Okay. So you think that's going to be a good place to be insulated from everything you've been talking about? You don't make those kinds of decisions. You make them for family reasons. Okay. <laughs> uh, you make them for to be happy and yeah. uh, uh, not just necessarily for money. Yeah. Uh, or, you, well, you, you want to protect your family. I don't think, you know, uh, if what you say is happening, uh, I, I think it could be, uh, you, you've been through some political upheaval in your life. And uh, if you care about your family, uh, it's not going to be easy here in the U.S., if everything you say manifests, uh, you know, it's not going to be how much you have in the bank. It's going to be how prepared are you for when the system isn't working for everyone. So uh, everyone, here's Dan, handsome guy. I've uh, been uh, in these uh, markets for a long time, and you will learn about what's happening in the world, as you could tell from hearing him today. Dan, I want to thank you for taking time to edify our community with your wisdom.
Thank you very much. It was a pleasure there. Always a pleasure. Okay, my Have friend. Have a beautiful Look. end of her summer and a beautiful fall. Okay, yeah, you know, uh, all we have is now, money comes and goes, time is gone forever. If you could find a way for me to buy some time, let me know, Dan. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right, everyone. So that's a wrap for today, everyone. Thank you very much. And remember, don't just count your bars of gold and Krugerrands and Morgan silver dollars, count your blessings, and we'll see everyone tomorrow. Adios. So you're very welcome, everyone. And thanks again, Dan. And uh, we'll wrap it and see everyone tomorrow for investing.com Thursday. Adios. And thank you, Dan Popescu. Thank you very much.